The police version of events is that around 11.45, the cars stopped on the A182 near South Hetton. Sibbert was shot three times and two further shots shattered the driver's side windows of the Mark 10. Sibbert's body, blood-stained and covered in mud, was then dumped in the back of his car and driven back into South Hetton. Then the police say Stafford and Lavaglio drove to the castle where they were seen in the birdcage club at 12.20. The police case rested on matching the damage between the Jaguars and the murder happening before midnight. In the time between leaving Stafford's house in Peter Lee and their arrival at the birdcage, locations and alibis never disputed by the police, it was claimed they met Sibbert, killed him and dumped him and his car before driving to Newcastle. A tip-off led the police to the red E-type and within a day of the murder, Stafford and Lavaglio were arrested. So I got out of bed, dressed and went to the police station. And um, Superintendent Cole, um, he said, oh, it's only a, a formality, we just want to, to know um, your association with uh, Angus Sibbett. We're interviewing all sorts of different people. And I said, well, I'm willing to, obviously, you know, I want to know who did it. And any I can give you, uh, I will do. I thought it was a joke. I thought they were looking for anyone to put pressure on people. They were just grasping hairs, you know. The car, they got a car, they got me. When my name came in the frame, oh, he's got to be the one. And they went to get evidence to fit their policy or their view. Unlike Lavaglio, who'd never previously been in trouble with the police, Stafford was already a high-profile criminal. He'd served a seven-year jail sentence for possession of a gun. But that wasn't without incident. He was involved in two jailbreaks from Wandsworth and Dartmoor. And on his time on the run, he set up a highly lucrative fraud involving a bogus textile firm in Newcastle. Stafford and Lavaglio were interviewed at Peter Lee Police Station by Ronald Kell, the detective superintendent in charge of the investigation. Both men were questioned for some time, although only minimal notes were taken by Kell and there was no written record by the defence solicitor. Now retired from the police, Kell says he did question Lavaglio as to whether he was with Stafford all of the time on the night of the murder. But he vigorously denies the claims that Lavaglio was offered a deal. Declining to be interviewed on camera, he dismisses as rubbish claims that he made a similar offer to Minkoff. In a case which lacked any confession, motive or murder weapon, the mute testimony of the two damaged Jaguars sealed the fate of Stafford and Lavaglio. The jury was shown evidence of debris from the damaged E-type at the spot where the police say Sibbert was killed, the A182 near South Hetton. In this area, bullet cases and Sibbert's glasses were also found. To add to the complications, traces of blood were found in Sibbert's car that neither belonged to him or Stafford or Lavaglio. And a short distance away in a phone box, another smear of fresh blood was discovered, but this time from the same group as Sibbert's. The fact remains that in that car, but near the gear lever, was blood. And stated to be reasonably fresh blood and this blood was not the same group as the dead man and it wasn't the same group as the two accused therefore it's obvious there must have been somebody else there now this is rather confirmed probably by the fact that there's blood in the telephone kiosk which is the dead man's blood if this chap had got blood on his hands then Whoever took part in that murder must have had blood on his clothes. And there was no blood on either of the accused people's men's clothes. I don't think there was adequate evidence here to convict these two men. As long as there have been doubts about the safety of Stafford and Lavaglio's convictions, there have been alternative theories about how Sibbert met his death. Some say his complicated love life could have provoked a crime of passion. Alternatively, rumours were rife about a gangland killing, some suggest it could have been the Crays trying to spread their criminal network into the northeast. One who claims to know more than most is John Tumblety, a former criminal who claims he drove Sibbett's killer, who was neither Stafford nor Lavaglio, away from South Hetton and back to the Birdcage Club in Newcastle. 
Tumblety went into hiding after he was threatened with violence when he first made the claim back in the 70s. He's now turned his back on crime, but has agreed to talk to us on the condition we conceal his identity. He was a cockney, definitely a cockney, but his accent was quite strong. And he was new on the scene, drove out, seen him, stopped the car, he crossed the road, got in the car, turned round, headed straight back to Newcastle. The trousers that he was wearing were torn, bloodstained. Uh, his sock and his shoe was also covered in blood as well. He just seemed anxious to get back and get back to the, the birdcage. That was all he was interested in. The conversation stopped at that. He hardly spoke at all on the way in. And then I got contacted, arranged to meet someone, and I was told, whatever happened last night, forget it. Well, I just says I've already forgotten about it. It's nothing to do with me. Although far from conclusive, Tumblety's testimony does provide possible answers for unexplained blood at South Hetton. In the 35 years since they were convicted of the murder, Stafford and Lavaglio have consistently tried to overturn their convictions. But the Court of Appeal and Law Lords both rule that the verdict of the original trial still stands. Go back to the early 1970s, it was, I think, unheard of, in fact, I'm sure it was unheard of, for the courts to accept that people could have been convicted of murder and been kept in prison for five years for a crime they didn't commit. And so it would have been very difficult for a court of appeal in those days to accept that possibility. Now, a last chance to clear their names has been provided for the men through the newly created Criminal Cases Review Commission. The trial judge, Mr Justice O'Connor, has always faced criticism for the way he summed up the case. In reference to Lavaglio's close friendship with the victim, Sibbet, he likened the murder to Judas's betrayal of Jesus and the stabbing of Caesar by his friend, Brutus. I've never hurt anybody in my life. I didn't kill Angus. But in the, lo in the eyes of the law, I am a convicted murderer on life license. I do not want to die as a convicted murderer.